Here is potentially an interesting job. It's a violin I've been given and asked to cut down. It's a Viome, JB Viome, Jean Petit Viome. That is a Viome, not a violin with a Viome label in it, it is the Jibbing Viome. It's a Magini thing with a double turn and the extra row of purpling. And anyway, it's oversized. It's, uh, I don't know what size it's meant to be, but it's bigger than a standard violin. Uh, yeah, it's 14 and a half inches and um, long in the body stop. So, in order to cut it, I've been given an outline of a pre another Vion. You can't see it on that bit of paper, but it's there. Uh, uh, that I'm supposed to make it like, uh, lengthwise. So, the job is to cut it down, which means cutting, as, as it's double row purfling, I have to cut down the inside and cut out. And unfortunately, I have to do it at the top as well because the, I have to get the stop right, not just the whole length of the whole instrument. Um, it's potentially a very interesting thing to show. Uh, and I will be showing you at the various stages. See, cut that's front and back. I'll cut the front first and get it as near to that outline as I can and secure it with under edging. And um, uh, it's a bit hard to explain, so I'll have to demonstrate at the various stages exactly what I'm cutting where and why and what I hope to achieve and then I, I, if I do the top then I can use the top outline as a pattern for the back because I have to make sure I get the, the body stop right and then when I've got that right I can make sure that the back measures as near as damn it the same then I'll reassemble the, uh, uh, the instrument with the ribs and the neck I'll have to take the ribs off obviously and the neck out and take the blocks out, there's no, they're original blocks, but I can't help it because uh, I have to reset everything, include the ribs in a little bit, and of course that means the neck as well. It's potentially very straightforward, but not easy. So, um, as I say, it's a decent instrument, uh, and it renders something a bit peculiar, odd-sized, into something standard size and probably consequently more valuable. I've only ever done it once through a VM like this, before that I can remember, and I think in my 50 odd years, I know I keep mentioning my 50 odd years, I think I've done it once or twice, but long, long time ago. Um, the theory is the same, You, the way of doing it is more or less the same for those of us few that ever do it. Um, anyway, I'll show you the various stages, hopefully I can make it look interesting and um, get a result that uh, you know, makes it into something not just saleable, but more usable. Obviously, it'll make it saleable and usable, but anyway, JBVM cut down to size. Okay, all the bits prior to uh, starting work. Um, I hope there'll be a final shot when it's all back together and uh, near as can be a normal violin. A normal size violin, anyway. Okay, here's a intermediate sort of stage on the table. I've um, already cut the top down and underaged it to secure. It's a bit because it was so fragile. I didn't try and illustrate it by showing you bits and pieces. But it may be easier on the bottom here. You see, I've cut one side. See, I've cut this piece from there. And this is the piece I've cut out. So, I don't know if you can see that's very clear. Like that. So I'll do the same on the other side. Um, I've already cut the, uh, the, 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 the edge down to half thickness so that I can cut it more easily. This is the saw I'm cutting it with. Um, I forget, that's kind of a fret saw, but a very, very, very fine blade. So you can cut without tearing out or ripping up. It's, even so, it tears out a little bit, but uh, I don't have a finer blade. So it looks terrible at this stage, but um, it'll be all right, I think. I hope it should be. I'll, uh, I'll show you when I've... Um, uh, I, I will have to sort of fit that. It doesn't quite fit now, so I have to sort of shape it 
so that it fits in and I sort of glue it on and then put the under edging on it. It's a bit difficult to actually explain in words, but I'll try and show you in tiny incremental stages. Okay, bye. Okay, this uh, could be interesting. This is this is the top. This is a this is the uh, maybe I'm supposed to be copying. This is the outline that's on the paper here. See, I've cut the top down. It's not quite there, but I mean it's fairly close for a cut down job. Anyway, what I was going to show you was the bottom here. Here's the edges I've cut off. And some of the offcuts, these broken bits, I'm going to throw away, obviously. But this now has to be sort of fitted back. It doesn't fit, obviously, but I've got it. I will make it, cut it, bend it to fit, and then under edge it underneath to hold it, and then touch it in and variously round here to uh, blend it in. Obviously I've done the top already and you can see there are various cuts and things where I've had to sort of refit it. It looks a bit scruffy at this stage but this can be made to look good, you know, uh, after it's been filled and cleaned down and touched in again. Fortunately, this is one of those things that's got a lot of fake aging on it. All this is not original. This is not um, real aging. It's all um, sort of been faked on, but that doesn't mean to say it's not a decent VM, all really the same. Okay, uh, this will look better, look more interesting when I do it on the back. Because these bits, these offcuts all fall, fall to bits, it looks a bit of a mess. But nonetheless, you can get a good idea from that, my cup of tea there, look. Um, what the idea is, I hope it's just coming back sharp again, keep moving the phone around and it goes out of focus. Anyway, you can get the idea and I'll, I'll try and uh, show it more clearly when I come to do the under edging. I'll show you it again when I do the under edging and you can maybe see a more intermediate stage. Okay. Okay, is a stage further on. Um, I Those two pieces I showed in the previous clip I sort of stitch glued them up to the cut area from before. Okay, next stage. Uh, you can't really see much. I said I'd show it to you after I put the cramps on, but as you can see, it's just all a bit uh, difficult to see. Oh, I can tell you what I can do is <laughs> I can wash. All that is horrible splotchy glue away from inside that I didn't do just now. See, me hot glue, hot water, back, wash away, all this nasty excess, always, 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 always wash away the excess glue. Because once it's dried and gone hard and chips, it's just, well, obviously it's hard to get rid of. It's, um, Clean and tidy. All right. Okay. I've cut. I've finished the table. Really. I've underaged it there, as you can see. And uh, it looks very scruffy. I know, but this this will be fine. I think this looks a lot better to me. I'll be able to uh, tidy up and varnish that in to look pretty good. I reckon. But if I lay the the table roughly on top of the back you'll see just looking at the bottom how much I've shortened it by I can line it up at the top so it's, so it's that much 5 sixteenths or something like that so okay you can't that's a bit hard to get them actually side by side but now I've got to do the same to the back as I've done to the top I suppose really, I mean, it does, fortunately the heel is not an original heel, so it doesn't matter if I lose it, which inevitably you have to do, so I'll have to make a new heel, uh, because there's no way of keeping it, but uh, I don't think it matters, but uh, ultimately 
it wants to be the same size as the table now and uh, anyway the same job I have then I will have to reassemble the uh, the whole thing you know taking a bit off the end of the ribs and anyway I'll, I'll understand it when I come to it but um, I'll, I'll go through uh, bits and pieces on the back like I have the top so that you can see that it is uh, more or less the same job but you'll be able to see the bits and pieces as I do them all right uh, more illustration really to show what I'm doing there's the piece obviously and here is uh, the cut this is the last part doing the back the bottom of the back uh, to show the other side where I've cut it for under edging the top is now finished I've done that already uh, obviously it didn't require the heel fitting as well and a piece on the edge to hide the side joint I guess that keeps going out of focus anyway any better this is the saw I use and a very very we can't see it obviously it's not going to focus on that but it's a fine blade <laughs> Anyway, I'll carry on and uh, it's a bit hard to actually demonstrate it Act while I'm doing it. It's a bit sort of delicate and floppy. You're cutting it. It's a bit anxious making, but it's almost there now. I know you can't really see because if I can't get my setup close enough to illustrate sort of over my shoulder what I'm doing, but... To give you an idea of the setup, I've got a bit of wood cramped to the bench, and uh, I'm, you know, sawing away like so. I'm gonna keep blowing the dust away, or I'll lose my line. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. That's where the blade is. I've gone and broken it. Okay. Okay, uh, this is the back with all the bits cut and just assembled in place. Obviously the job is to take these out. It's a bit awkward to do this. And then fix those there. Not fit them really, I've got to fiddle about to get them to look nice, snuggle up a bit. And then uh, glue them in place, just spot, spot glue them because they wouldn't hold obviously there's almost nothing to glue to along this purpled edge but uh, obviously it's the under edge that fixes it but uh, I've got a bit to do before I get to that stage. I have um, <clears throat> sort of realised I may be getting ahead of myself, I'm not showing much but um, I started to put the ribs back on the back. I've done the last bit of shortening <coughs> and under edged it and cleaned it all up um, I don't know what more I can think of say really so that I will be putting the ribs back on I did that one yesterday but I've, I've been stalled a little bit on the top because I realized I needed a bit of uh, edging corners I'm doing it now and then it will need a bar and a few minor crack repairs so I'll probably show it to you when I've done the bar and and uh, well, maybe I'll show you myself doing the bar, I don't know, but uh, <coughs> there'll be plenty of other, sorry, <coughs> I've got a cold, plenty of other bits and pieces to see, but really, it's, now that the essential shortening job is done, it's sort of reassembling it, but um, which isn't necessarily that interesting. Uh, I'll have to do some, a new top and bottom block, of course, uh, it's very standard work, a bar, as I say, standard work. Um, Anyway, I'll even if for the sake of continuity, I'll try and do uh, a little piece at a, a more uh, intermediate stage when I've got the say the posts in and the bar in, and I'm about to put it together. Say, um, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to bush the peg holes. Get it in the light. Uh, it's just that um, they look a bit big, and I don't like the pegs. The horrible ebony peg. I don't like those. Anyway, it's not up to me, it's up to the person who owns it, partially. We'll talk about that again later, maybe. But 
Otherwise, I could put the old pegs back in and it would look alright. I need to tidy that up a bit, of course, but uh, they're looking a bit scruffy. Okay, I've uh, put the body of the beam back together. I don't know if you can see clearly, but you can see the white wood where I've done the repairing, the, sh the shortening. I'm sometimes a bit reluctant to show this stage of any job, let alone something like this, because obviously it looks a bit scruffy and a bit sort of, uh, well, I don't know, you can always say, well, you've gone too far, but um, if you get a good idea of what's been done from what I've described before and uh, what you can see now. But what I'll do is I've, I've just done a final clean up on the woodwork job. You can see that very well. And um, prior to the varnishing, I'm sure you don't want to see my cup of tea, but anyway, you can now. I can't. I'm not going to redo the sequence. A few. Uh, minor cracks there that I've repaired um, the same view on the back my new hill, the old hill wasn't an original hill anyway so I've got no uh, particular qualms with just doing a new one again at this stage it looks very scruffy, I'm not going to fit the neck till I've done most of the varnishing I want to do to the body just because it suits me to do that, I'll uh, do that later I thought I'd do a second sequence of uh, showing the beam. I'm not because I'm not sure if the other one looks so good, but the I hope that can focus on that. I can't see tell without my glasses on. Um, but the white wood, the new the new wood that, that's obviously part of the shortening job. Just to show where where there is white wood and where I've I've had to do, say bits of edging, corners. Uh, you can close, close. Is that football focus to show? As I said on the other sequence, it can look very scruffy at this stage, and I'm a bit reluctant to show because it might give you the wrong impression of how it's going to finally look. But uh, I'm uh, fairly ruthless at this stage, and I don't want any bad or lumpy joints or out of shape bits to show I want to, to go back as far as I can there too, and it's all horribly bloomed here and there too you can see those sort of white patches that will polish out I hope, they usually do and um, anyway I hope this will look considerably better the next time you see it after I've done the bits and pieces of varnishing as I said on the other sequence if, uh, if I use it um, I, I like to do the varnishing without the neck, and the neck in is, the fishing the neck is a kind of, uh, not exactly secondary, but I can leave it all right, so I haven't got to do it. Um, it won't make any difference to the quality of what I'm doing here. And I, I got into the habit of, of late of doing the varnishing on the body first. It, partly I got into the habit with chars because it's so big and clunky. I'm swinging the head around and it's just easier to, to do the head separately later. So I put, I put the neck and just do the bit of varnishing that the head may need. Um, last, because then I'm confident I've done most of the body, so it's just just a stage, it's just the way I do it, isn't it? I absolutely have no uh, um, issue that with doing it either either way, I've just now got into the habit of doing it like this, but uh, I'll show you afterwards, and with a bit of luck it'll look considerably better. Anyway, it measures up right now, that's the important thing. Once again, not really, so it, it measures the uh, 14 and the 16th, as opposed to the sort of 14 and a half that it was. And it doesn't look too, the outline doesn't look too awful, does it? This is definitely a bit wider across here than the average violin, but everything else is pretty much the same. And the stop length, importantly, is the same. Um, anyway, we'll see it later. A bit of an update. Um, I, this is a, an intermediate stage. I've done some of the varnishing a few times. I've gone through, look, you can see, I need to touch up again. I fitted the neck yesterday, I had to do a new fingerboard. Uh, and do various adjustments to get the angle right. Um, 
I didn't bother particularly to show you the various stages of varnishing since the areas of varnishing are fairly small. Again, you can see I've I've, I've gone through here and there, so I will need to touch up. So it's a bit of a risk showing you at this sort of what I would call scruffy stage. It's, but it's it's on the way to being finished, and it's not far off now. And uh, then it will just fitting up, but. I don't know if you can get an overall impression from this. I will show you, as you can see, see I've still got to get it, adjust, do a colour and finish adjustments. You can see where I've been. You can, to some extent, see the slight over varnishing, which I'll have to take off yet. Same in the back, but I mean, it, that's not bad really when you consider that what a serious bit of surgery is required to. Shorten an instrument that generally speaking it's not that obvious. I'm showing you now because you can still see the bits of interference in the line. Fortunately, the purfling you see there, you can see if you look close, you can see where I've cut through. Fortunately, the purfling is not perfect anyway, it's lumpy, bumpy, and irregular. Deliberately, I suppose, uh, VM has done that in order to make it look a little bit sort of rustic, and because I've had to cut round. I won't have necessarily improved it, but it doesn't seem obvious, and especially if you didn't know it had been done, I think you might not spot it. Of course, I'm highlighting it here so that you can get some idea. I'll show you the next time I show you, it'll be as, as finished as I can make it. I will do quite a lot more messing about with this to try and get as good a look as I can manage, finally. Uh, before I stop, before I maybe go too far, you can always, there's always a risk of going too far on these things. You've got to know when to stop. It's not, I haven't quite got to that stage yet. A bit more varnishing to do here and there. But, um, it measures up right, that's the important thing. Um, this is the Viome finished now I didn't show too much of the intermediate varnishing stage because it was varnishing in very small areas and very uh, not I don't think a particularly interesting example of techniques of varnishing so I'm, so, I'm sorry I thought I, it is you know, left it to this stage but I have to finish it off it's just a standard setup and um, the only other thing I've done since I last showed or spoke was to make a new fingerboard. So, which is now uh, it's near finished. I might have to do a little bit more varnishing. I don't know. Depends. I'll leave it a few days and then pick it up and hope that. I mean, if you look close, you can see what I've done. But if you if you didn't know it had been cut down, and you weren't an expert, a dealer, or a, or a restorer, you could easily miss it, I think. I think it's good enough to say that. Okay, I'll do another piece to camera uh, on with the, with the phone on the... Uh, Stand. Okay, a piece of camera more or less uh, repeating some of what I said, trying to give you a, a more close up view of the VOM finished. As I said on the other piece, it's pretty nearly finished, I think, unless the client decides they want something else doing. Um, as I said on that piece, the the details of the varnishing job around the cut down are not especially illuminating or interesting. If I do something in the future about varnishing, I wouldn't use a job like this to show you because you just you just can't see enough, and I can't demonstrate well enough the secrets, the dark secrets of successful varnishing. I'm reasonably satisfied with the job. The average. 
person probably wouldn't spot that the instrument being made shorter. The only thing I can see is that this area, this distance across here is a little bit bigger than on the average violin, but I mean it's not horribly disproportionate. It doesn't smack you in the eye as being a little bit odd looking. And uh, now is a, a usable standard length body and neck and stop length so as it, to pick it up and play it will feel like any other violin and is a violin and uh, one of these strange Brescian type Magini copies but a violin nonetheless and uh, a more I suppose easy to sell and anyway Nabby wants a 14 and a half inch instrument because you know there are too many of the standard size for anybody to even want one but um, don't know why you ever did it but anyway, finished. Uh, as I said, a bit of a jump from the last stage I spoke at any great length, but um, as I said, I didn't see any point in showing you some of the details of because they're too pernickety and, and small and local to sort of uh, illustrate uh, varnishing very well. And of course I've done a setup and a new fingerboard as it happens, so they're all very standard work that's probably uh, hard to be interesting about, I think. The end, okay?